All right, we're all set now. What I want to do is turn on the telescope, turn on the mount, walk through the steps required for getting it up and running for visuals. Uh, we've connected the cigarette lighter adapter into the end of one of these battery packs. You can pick these up at an auto parts store. Cigarette lighter goes in here. This powers your mount for a long time, I don't know. There's lots of information about this type of thing, battery power, remote power, etc. online. This is what I use. It's one of these jump starter things from the auto parts store. Super easy. Plug it in. It works no problem. Now, we're setting this up and doing this walkthrough during the day. So we're not really going to see too much, but I want to walk through step by step the things that are required from the map. First thing, turn it on. Power's up. Advanced GT, press enter to begin alignment. Move the mount to both index marks. So remember, we saw that picture earlier, the two marks. Make sure that we're aligned to the home position, the index marks. Press enter. Now it wants to know about a saved site. As we've used this before, it wants to use the site that you were at last. We're going to use a phone app just to get our map coordinates of our current location. So we're going to say undo to edit. Enter longitude. It's going to want longitude and latitude. So you can use your phone app. I got a compass. Looks us up. Uh, it's going to give you some coordinates. That's all you need to put in. The more accurate you are for this type of thing, the better your go-to's and your initial setup will be. Uh, but something off your phone seems to work fine every time I've run it. West, 33 degrees north. Time, currently, 514, so what is that? 1714. Daylight savings time. That's the tricky part for me. I never can remember. Daylight savings time or not. I believe we're in daylight savings time right now. Are we? Once you put your date, time, location in, select your alignment. There's a few options. There's last alignment, one no star alignment, one part star alignment. I like to always do the two star alignment. And now it's going to search and find for us what are the best stars in the sky for right now. Uh, it'll recommend something if you know the night sky. That's a lot more fun. If you've got an app or something on a phone that can tell you what's up, what these bright stars in the sky are, they can help you start to identify the skies in the, the stars in the skies, uh, night sky. Uh, so you can start to identify where you want to go. You'll slew to those. You'll choose those as your alignment stars. It's choosing one that it wants, Arcturus. So we're going to say OK. And it's going to slew to that location. Like I said, it's daytime, and I'm under my patio. We don't really see it, but I'm going to show you just how this works. It's going to go all the way over to it, and it's going to be somewhere high in the sky. Now what it's going to ask you to do, once it gets settled in, it's going to tell you to... Find Arcturus and use the direction buttons to center it in the finder scope. So you'll get down and you'll look through the finder scope like this. Inside the finder scope is a crosshair. So you're going to use the arrows on the hand controller to move that star to the center of that crosshair. Now, there's a lot of information online that will help you figure out a scientific or a mathematical reason what button is Oh, right ascension, what button is declination, which direction, left or right. Well, here's what I do. I'll push it one direction. If that's the right direction, great. If it's the wrong, I go the other way. Simple. So you look through here. 
you'll go, you can see the bright star in the sky, you're gonna hand controller this around, and you're gonna get that star right on the crosshair of your finder scope. And press enter. Now I want you to look in your eyepiece and center it in the eyepiece. So you'll look in here, you'll see that it may be off center. You'll try to use your buttons on your hand controller, center it in the eyepiece. Looks great. And then it says press align when it's done. Now it's gonna move right on and su suggest a second star, Spica. So we'll go to that one. It'll ask for the same thing. It'll say, look through your finder scope, center the star in the finder scope. So you'll get behind here and you'll look through the thing and you will use your buttons on your hand controller to center the star in the crosshair on your finder scope and press enter. Now look through your eyepiece. You'll use the buttons to center it. And what it's doing here is it'll slew at two different speeds. So the speed through the eyepiece will be a little faster. And then when you get it centered, you look in the, excuse me, through the finder scope is a little bit faster. When you look through the eyepiece, it slews real slow. So you'll see fine tuning to get it right there in the center. They sell reticles or eyepieces with a crosshair in it that you can use for this sort of thing if you want. Uh, you can pick one of those up if you decide you like that idea. So you'll use your directional buttons and you'll align it. Now what it does after this, it says, you did your two star alignment, great. Do you wanna add a calibration star? That's like adding a third star. You can add up to four calibration stars to really get this accurate. I always say, why not? It will choose a star in the eastern part of the sky. And so it'll go all the way to the other side. So let's say, sure, let's press enter and it's going to slew all the way over to Deneb, which is in the east. Right now. September 2020. When these things start slewing, you always got to watch your cords. Watch your cables, watch your cords, especially as you start to attach cameras, other things, guide scopes, guide cameras, and things to here. You'll have a lot more power cords and things dangling down, USB cords. You'll always kind of watch all your cords as it starts to slew around to make sure nothing gets grabbed, picked up, pulls, etc. So again, the hand controller will allow you to add up to four calibration stars if you want to go this route. Some people do it, some people don't. I like the idea. I always find that at least adding one star on the east improves your go-to considerably. So same thing, it slews to where it thinks it is in the sky, and now it's asking you to find it in the finder scope using the hand controller. So you'll go around to your finder scope, and you'll look up at the sky. You'll see the star, use both eyes, you can see this real life star and you can see it in the finder in your right eye and then you just slew using the buttons until it's centered you press enter now you look in the eyepiece and you fine tune it at that slower speed and get it centered right in the middle best you can looks great you say a line now it's done with the calibration star you can add a second third fourth star if you prefer Otherwise, you say, hey, I'm done, right? It's calibrating, did my star. Enter if you'd like to add another calibration star. Undo if you're done. So for this example, we're gonna undo. Alignment success. Then it just says, advanced GT, it's ready. So what you do now, you're ready to look at something in the sky. So if you wanna go to an object, there's a whole bunch of objects loaded into the hand controller. You can manually enter right ascension, declination coordinates for certain objects if you prefer to do it that way. But the go-to capabilities of the hand controller is half the fun. So again, like I said, the first night you get it, 
get out in the backyard, you're going to see the two bright planets that are out right now, and you're going to say, hey, go to Jupiter, and it's going to slew right over to Jupiter, and you look in your eyepiece, and you check it out. Uh, you can manually slew this around the sky, and you can use these buttons to push things around. There is some other information where it'll give you information about certain objects where it'll display on the little screen kind of going across. It's kind of fun. There's a lot of apps for your phone and tablet and computer and things that give you a lot more information, but the hand controller will do a lot of that stuff for you. There's different catalogs, the Messier catalogs in here, the NGC catalogs in here, name stars are in here, the planets are in here. So a lot of stuff that you can do with the hand controller. And like I said, there's tons of information online. If you want to do a search for the Celestron Nexstar hand controller, you can get tutorials and how-tos and videos about everything that's included in this hand controller. They can tell you all about it. So uh, what's neat to see is that this thing working, it's moving through the sky, it's going to go right to where you want it. The better your alignment is, the better leveled your mount is, how good your polar alignment is, how good your calibration stars get centered, all those things are going to help this experience of the go-to work a lot better. So that's how to get it on and get it turned on. The sky has not been good the last few nights, so we probably won't be able to look through it tonight either. But that's how it works. That's how you turn it on. That's how you do your alignment. And it's good to go and ready for action.